Russia has portrayed itself as the main successor of the Kievan Rus and called Ukrainian Crimea, Odessa, and Kharkiv historically Russian. Moscow uses these propaganda narratives as a powerful weapon to justify its war against Ukraine. But how did these distortions originate? Let's take a look at how Moscow has been stealing and rewriting Ukrainian history for centuries. This is Kyiv and Rus, a medieval state centered around the city of Kyiv. It existed within the territories of modern-day Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus. In Russian historiography, it is often portrayed as the forerunner of what would become Russia, while Ukraine and Belarus are depicted as marginal offshoots of Kyiv and Rus. Also, the words Rus and Russia sound very similar. So isn't that clear proof of Russia being the legitimate successor of Kyiv and Rus? No, it's not. Initially, Rus, a word of Scandinavian origin, referred to the whole territory of the Kyiv and Rus, spreading from the Black Sea to the Baltic. After the fall of Kievan Rus, the term was used in reference to the Western Kingdom of Galicia Volinia, known as the Ruthenian Kingdom or the Kingdom of the Rus, which was centered around Lviv. After the Western Ukrainian Kingdom fell in the mid 14th century, the honorary title remained vacant for several centuries. In 1547, Moscow Prince Ivan IV, known as Ivan the Terrible, crowned himself as the Tsar and Grand Duke of all Rus, and subsequently introduced the term Russia interchangeably with Moscow. As the Tsardom of Moscow was gaining power and laying claims to neighboring regions, referring to itself as the legitimate successor of all Rus helped its cause. Despite Moscow claiming the title and changing its name, Kyiv remained the cradle of Rus, where the greatest number of surviving historic and cultural sites of that period can be found. Determining who exactly is the chief modern successor of Kyiv and Rus is difficult, but some historians historians argue it's either all three East Slavic countries, Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus, or none of them. In the 18th century, Russia began officially referring to Ukrainian territory as Melorussia, or Little Russia, speaking of itself as Velikorossia. Great Russia, and Belarus as White Russia. This term actually existed long before the Russian Empire, appearing in Byzantine sources as far back as the 14th century. Then, the name Little Rus was used to describe the Kingdom of Galicia Volinia due to its smaller size compared to its predecessor, the Kievan Rus. But Russia distorted this meaning. Thus, Little Russia became a derogatory term signifying Ukraine as a subject of Moscow, which now called itself Russia. For its part, the name Ukraine first appeared in the 12th century and became an unofficial name for the regions near the Dnipro River starting from the 16th century. Picked up by the Ukrainian Cossacks, the term became the preferred way for Ukrainians to call the land they lived on. Today, Little Russia is often used by Russian imperialists along with the term Novorossiya, or New Russia, in reference to southern Ukraine. The term New Russia emerged in the 18th century, when southern Ukraine was annexed by the Russian Empire. Historically, this territory had been known as desht e kipchak in Crimean Tatar, or Dikapola, the Wild Fields, in Ukrainian. Between the 16th and the 18th centuries, it was home to the cradle of Ukrainian statehood, the Zaporizhian Siege. Russian imperialists, however, usually ignore this fact. Russian terrorist Igor Gurkin, who was instrumental in launching Russia's 2014 aggression in the Donbass used the term Novorossiya and Melorossiya in reference to Ukraine, saying that the country is historically Russian. Russian propaganda also often speaks of Odessa, a major port city in southern Ukraine, as historically Russian. They say Russia's Empress Catherine II founded the city. Up until last year, a monument to Catherine II and other Tsarist-era figures stood in downtown Odessa. Ten months into Russia's full-scale war, Ukraine took down the statues, which sparked outrage in Russia. Odessa itself is a monument to Catherine the Great, Russian propaganda claimed. The reality, however, is much more complicated 
located. The first settlements in what is now the territory of Odessa, Istrian Harbor, Isayakon, and Skopeli existed long before the Russian Empire. They were founded by the ancient Greeks in the 6th century BCE. In the 14th century, the town of Hashibe was founded where the Greek colonies once existed. The area was ruled by the Golden Horde, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, and the Crimean Khanate. In the 18th century, Russian troops joined the Zaporizhian Cossacks to capture Hajibe. Empress Catherine II ordered the town to be developed into a major port city and renamed it as Odessa. Russian imperialists ignore the history of Odessa prior to its annexation, as they tend to do with other Ukrainian cities as well. According to the Kremlin's propaganda, the eastern Ukrainian city of Kharkiv was founded by Russia in the 17th century. However, from the 8th through 13th centuries, there were Alan, Hazar, Ruthenian, and Kuman cities which existed in and near Kharkiv. When the Russian Tsardom built the Kharkiv fortress in the 17th century, Kharkiv became a key center of the Sloboda Cossacks, Ukrainians who had moved from the central and northern parts of Ukraine to the territory of modern-day Kharkiv Oblast. Another land that Moscow has repeatedly called historically Russian is Crimea. However, throughout its history, Crimea has been controlled by Greeks, Scythians, Mongols, Crimean Tatars, Russians, and Ukrainians. The Greeks, who have lived on the peninsula since the 7th century BCE, and the Crimean Tatars, who had settled the land in the 14th century, held it the longest. Russia would eventually erase the peninsula's both Greek and Crimean Tatar legacy. It forcibly deported most of the Greek population to modern-day Donetsk Oblast, while the Crimean Tatars were forced into cattle cars bound for Central Asia. To find out more about Crimea, watch our previous episode, Who Does Crimea Really Belong To? Not only has Moscow seized Ukrainian lands, but has also appropriated Ukrainian writers, artists, and scholars, labeling their achievements as Russian. This is what happened to writer Mikola Gogol, who Russians have declared to be one of the leading figures of classic Russian literature. The monument to Gogol in Novodevichy Cemetery in Moscow, where he is buried, calls him a great Russian writer. Gogol lived in St. Petersburg and wrote in the Russian language, but he was in fact an ethnic Ukrainian who was born in Sorochi a village in modern-day Ukraine. According to historian Tolas Truhlib, Gogol's ancestors included the Ukrainian Cossack Ostep Gogol. He served as the inspiration for Taras Bulba, the main character in one of Gogol's most famous novels. Gogol wrote about Ukraine his entire life and called himself a Ukrainian or Melorossian, according to Truhlib. Serhei Korolov, the father of the Soviet Union's space program, who sent the first man to space in 1961, is also often appropriated by Russia. Russian officials and media present Korolov as either a Russian or Soviet scientist, omitting his Ukrainian descent. Korolov was born in the Ukrainian city of Zhytomyr to a Ukrainian family. In his hometown, there are two museums celebrating his legacy, the Space Museum and the House Museum of Serhei Korolov. In addition to Zhytomyr, he also lived and studied in Kyiv and Odessa. In 1938, during the Great Purge campaign led by Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, Korolov was arrested as an enemy of the state. He spent almost six years behind bars, including a few months in a gulag labor camp. In 1940, while still in prison, Korolov was assigned to work on rocketry. Another Ukrainian scientist who Russia has tried to appropriate is aviation engineer Ihor Sikorsky. Russia's Central Air Force Museum in Moscow Oblast calls Sikorsky a Russian and later an American aviation engineer. But Sikorsky was born in Kyiv, studied in Kyiv, and his first proto-aircraft were created in Kyiv, which was at the time part of the Russian Empire. During the Russian Civil War of 1919 to 1922, Sikorsky immigrated to the United States at the age of 20. He became an aviation pioneer and businessman. He died in 1972 in the United States, having never returned home. The Kyiv International Airport, as well as Kyiv Polytechnic Institute, are named in his honor. As Russia has been appropriating Ukraine's history and culture for centuries, it has succeeded in making many Ukrainian achievements perceived as Russian by the international community. Now that Ukraine is in the global spotlight due to Russia's full-scale invasion, the country is fighting to win recognition for its legacy. From officials to individual activists, Ukrainians have been campaigning to spread awareness about Ukrainian achievements and Ukrainians who are falsely labeled as Russian. As a result, museums across the world have 
recognize Kazimir Malevich, Ilya Repin, and Arhip Koinji, among others, as Ukrainian rather than Russian artists. The fight has just started and will take time and effort, but Ukraine is finally reclaiming its true history. If you want to see more videos like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the Kiev Independence YouTube channel.